Welcome to China Currents, your weekly news report on the latest developments in China. In this episode, 27 heads of state attended the September 3rd military parade, and Chinese scientists successfully transplanted a gene-edited pig lung into a human. And China is building a scientific facility 700 meters underground to unravel the mysteries of the universe. At China's latest auto show, luxury foreign cars were conspicuously absent. Hangzhou has included AI classes in its standard school curriculum as part of the nationwide educational push. China Current is a weekly news talk show from China to the world. We cover viral news about China every week and also give you the newest updates on China's cutting-edge technologies. Let's get started. I'm Chris. Now let's start today's China Currents. On September 3rd, Beijing's Tiananmen Square hosted a grand military parade commemorating the 80th anniversary of victory in the Chinese People's War of resistance against Japan and a global fight against fascism. The event showcased China's consistent pursuit of peace, the development of the People's Liberation Army and its world-class advanced weaponry. The Space Force, Cyberspace Force, and information support force made their debut as new additions to the military. The weapons formations, divided into eight sections, highlighted the Chinese military's main active equipment. Official Chinese commentary emphasized that the weapons has been modified to meet the demands of modern warfare. Particularly noteworthy were three aspects. First, the air defense and missile defense troops displayed a counter-drone combat group capable of neutralizing and even destroying drones. Second, the parade presented the systematized display of China's unmanned combat groups across land, sea, and air. Third, for the first time, China's triad of land, sea, and air-based strategic nuclear forces was showcased. The official commentary highlighted the DA-5C liquid-fueled intercontinental nuclear strategic missile with a strike range covering the entire globe. One distinctive feature caught people's attention a hot food support vehicle with cooking stoves. It seems that the Chinese military goes to great lengths to ensure that soldiers can enjoy fresh Chinese cuisine even on the battlefield. During CCTV's live broadcast, close-up shots were given to Putin, Kim Jong-un, former Kuomintang chairwoman Hong Xiu-chu, and respiratory disease expert Zhong Nanshan. Even before the official list of foreign leaders in attendance was released, the event had already drawn global commentary, with many seeing it as the reflection of Chinese foreign relations. Russian President Vladimir Putin's unusually long visit attracted special notice. From August 31st to September 3rd, he not only watched the parade, but also attended the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Tianjin. By contrast, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi only took part in the SCO summit. Analysts suggested that New Delhi sought to cool its engagement with Beijing following a recent thaw in relations. Also drawing attention was the appearance of former Japanese Prime Minister Yukio Hatoyama. The 79-year-old Hatoyama, who once knelt in mourning for victims of the Nanjing Massacre and bowed at an anti-Japanese memorial in South Korea, has long been branded a traitor by Japan's right wing. His visit to China this time triggered a backlash at home, with critics even calling for his passport to be revoked. Shen Yi, a renowned Chinese professor of international relations, remarked, Who respects history and who betrays history? The guest list makes that crystal clear. And Hu Shijin, a prominent commentator and former editor-in-chief of Global Times, said, When will Japanese leaders attend Asia's largest World War II commemoration at Tiananmen Square with dignity, openly reflecting on the crimes of wartime militarism, only then will they truly move forward. Next, let's turn to a groundbreaking surgery. Recently, a team of Chinese scientists announced that they had successfully transplanted the pig lung into a 39-year-old male patient who had been declared brain dead with the consent of his family. For nine days, the transplanted lung remained viable and functional. This was the world's first attempt at transplanting a pig lung into a human. The research was led by Professor He Jianxing's team at the first affiliated hospital of Guangzhou Medical University and published in Nature Medicine on August 25th. With global demand for organ transplants far outstripping supply, xenotransplantation, the use of animal organs, has long been considered a potential solution. The Chinese team's achievement marks it a major milestone. The challenges of these surgeries are immense. Immune rejection, physiological incompatibility across species, and infection risks. 
Success requires not only surgical expertise, but also genetic modification of donor pigs. Dr. Pandanka's group supplied the donor animal. He explained, the lung is one of the most difficult organs to transplant across species. The pig used in this case was gene edited to reduce the risk of immune rejection. After transplantation, the lung maintained ventilation and gas exchange for nine days with no sign of hyperacute rejection or active infection. The experiment concluded after nine days following discussion between the doctors and the patient's family. For years, xenotransplantation of pig livers has been called the holy grail of the field. Transplanting a pig lung is even more challenging because the lung directly interacts with substances from the external environment. Constant contact with air makes its immune defenses especially strong, leading to more aggressive rejection and higher risk of organ failure. Globally, dozens of large animal-to-human transplants have been attempted, mainly in China and the United States, involving hearts, kidneys, livers, and now lungs. Earlier this year, Chinese teams also achieved the world's first full liver xenotransplant from a gene-edited pig, as well as a pig kidney transplant into a patient with end-stage renal failure, who had now survived 173 days, one of the only two such patients worldwide still alive. Organ shortages remain one of the greatest challenges in the medical field, Professor He noted, and xenotransplantation may offer a real solution. While doctors push the boundary of life-saving medicine, Chinese physicists are peering into the origin of the universe. Last week, after more than a decade of preparation and construction, the Jiangmen Underground Neutrino Observatory, Juno, in Guangdong province officially began operation. Neutrinos, known as the ghost particles, are among the most abundant particles in the universe, second only to photons. Yet they are notoriously difficult to detect. No fewer than four Nobel Prizes have been awarded to neutrino-related discoveries, underscoring their importance. Scientists know neutrinos come in three flavors, electron, muon, and tau. Juno's mission is to determine their mass hierarchy, an extraordinarily delicate measurement. To achieve this, Juno was built 700 meters underground, shielding it from the constant bombardment of cosmic rays. Think of it as turning off city lights in order to see faint starlight. Its core detector is the 35.4-meter acrylic sphere holding 20,000 tons of liquid scintillator, surrounded by a 41.1-meter stainless steel support frame fitted with 45,000 photomultiplier tubes. Together, these instruments capture the faint traces of passing neutrinos and amplify their signals. First proposed in 2008 and under construction since 2015, Juno is a major international collaboration. Nearly 700 researchers from 74 institutions and 17 countries will participate. Its results may shed light on solar nuclear reactions, nearby supernovae, nuclear reactor monitoring, and even the Earth's internal structure. Now let's shift gears to China auto market. On August 29th to September 7th, Chengdu, the hub of southwest China, hosted the 28th Chengdu Motor Show. Compared with last year, the absence of imported luxury brands has become more pronounced, with eight major names missing from the lineup this year. As one of China's four premier auto shows, the Chengdu event gathered around 120 brands, spanning passenger cars, modified vehicles, humanoid robots, and the latest trends in EV technologies such as batteries, motors, and electronic control systems. The exhibition covered 220,000 square meters and featured over 1,600 vehicles. But the luxury haul from last year looked very different. In 2023, foreign brands such as Porsche, Bentley, Lamborghini, Rolls-Royce, and Lotus had glamorous displays there. This year, the same space hosted by Chinese marks like Xiaomi, Hongqi, GAC Honda, and CATL. Imports of ultra-luxury cars have been falling sharply since 2023. In July this year, sales of imported luxury cars in China totaled 170,000 units, a 20% year-on-year drop, and nearly 30% lower than June. Consumers, however, hardly seem surprised. With Chinese EVs delivering blistering performance, Xiaomi Su7 Ultra, for example, matches Lamborghini and Ferrari in 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration and increasingly refined interiors. Foreign cars have lost much of their appeal. Finally, a sneak peek into Chinese classroom as the new school year begins. September 1st marked the start of new school year, and students in Hangzhou, home to fast-rising tech companies like DeepSeek and Unitree Robotics, found something new on their timetables – artificial intelligence classes. 
Under new guiding rules, primary and secondary students will receive at least 10 hours of AI education each year. The guidelines are detailed. In early primary school, classes focus on responsible AI use and privacy. Later, students learn AI concepts from decision trees to neural networks. By middle school, the curriculum covers the full AI workflow, data preparation, model training, interference, while addressing real-world challenges. In high school, students engage in project-based work, designing AI systems and developing intelligent agents to apply the technology in daily life. The move fits into a broader national push. In December 2024, the Ministry of Education called on schools to expand AI education, and in May this year, it issued two guidelines to ensure age-appropriate use. Guangdong Province, for example, has already mandated a minimum of six hours of AI classes annually starting from primary school. And that's all for today, and thank you for watching this episode of China Currents. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them below, and see you next time.